Well, I'd like to thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel to watch video. I uh, hope my videos are instructive and uh, help answer some questions. Uh, but what I'm, what I'm here to talk about today is using my SLT, my Celestron SLT-130 telescope uh, and, and putting a DSL on at DSLR camera on it as a prime focus. In other words, uh, this uh, telescope has a built-in, they probably, a lot of them do, but it has a built-in T-ring right here. Uh, so what I could do, what I'm hoping to be able to do is instead of using a, a 2X Barlow lens to attach to my camera so I can get the focus on the plane of my uh, uh, sensor my imaging sensor in the camera because uh, without the Barlow I can't do that. I don't have enough forward focus to get the plane and the focal point of the uh, telescope to match up so I can't get it in focus without using a Barlow lens but I want to be able to do prime, what they call prime focus where there's nothing between the camera and the uh, telescope and uh, so anyway what I and what happens whenever I do this like this is the images I'm taking of the moon and the sun, they are a lot bigger with the Barlow lens than the uh, uh, imaging sensor on the camera. So I'm cutting off part of the disk of the moon and the sun. I want to be able to get a full disk image of the moon and the sun, so that's why I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to mod the, the telescope. Well, this was this. I've looked online, and using the uh, uh, Barlow lens is one of the ways they uh, suggest to get around that, and it works great. Uh, another thing is that they talk about is cutting off part of the tube, at, at which, and then reattaching the mirror back on the shorter tube, and that would bring your focal plane, your focaling, your focal plane up here further. To where right now it's down, it's down somewhere in here, and I can't get down far enough to it. So by moving the mirror up, that's going to bring the focal plane up higher in the shaft of the focusing, so I can achieve prime focus. Well, I don't really want to cut the telescope because if I cut the telescope, it's always going to be that way. So if I ever got another telescope and I could have this one, and then I could take it and put the mirror back the way it was and I have a perfectly good secondary telescope for uh, viewing uh, just uh, viewing the night sky with and also if I'm out and about and somebody wants to see what this kind of telescope actually looks like uh, then uh, they can do that too so uh, like I say I don't want to ruin the actual telescope by cutting it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put spacers between the, the back plate here and the back of the mirror and allow it to shove it up to set it up further this way. Now the pieces I've got, the uh, hardware I got to do this with, I got I purchased online. I'll uh, put them in the description of what they are, uh, what part number they are, who I got them from, and uh, things like that. So you could you could also do this to your telescope if you wanted to. But another reason I want to do that is I've got this one two-inch eyepiece. Well, it's I've got an adapter on it to take it to one and a quarter. Well, what happens is with the one and a quarter, it's just like a Barlow. There's another piece of glass inside here that allows the focus to pick up the focus better. But once I take this off and I want to use it straight as a two-inch eyepiece, when I use the two-inch adapter in here, I still don't have enough forward focus to get it down to use this eyepiece without the adapter. And this eyepiece uh, will allow me to get closer, and this is the duo, so it'll actually, my, my, my camera, my Celestron camera that I've got will actually screw directly on this using a T adapter. So it's another reason I want to be able to use it is that way I'm looking actually using that camera with a two inch eyepiece and I don't know if it'll make a difference or not, but it might. I also have another camera that I, I can't use with it because of the focusing issue. Uh, it's a deep, it's a, a 
deep sky object camera, it takes longer longer exposures than my uh, Celestron camera does, and it's made by Orion. But I've got the same problem. I can't use it because I can't focus on it. And then again, I can if I use the, the Barlow lens, but I'm cutting off a lot, a lot more than what the camera can pick up because it's uh, magnifying, the, it's taking it from a 650 millimeter telescope to a, a 1300 millimeter telescope. So I'm cutting off the image. And uh, since I can't focus it, I haven't been able to actually use that camera yet. And once I get that done, I should be able to use that camera as well and start doing some deep sky imaging. So I'm going to go ahead and mod it. I'm going to walk you through what I'm doing. So at the end of this video, we'll go ahead and see if it works. Uh, and uh, uh, let's get to it. Okay, I've taken the telescope off the tripod and set it on the table with a towel underneath it. And then I took another towel and I uh, rolled it up and put it around all the way around the front end of my telescope so the telescope won't roll around while I'm doing this. So we'll go ahead and start the process of what I'm doing. And all that's going to take place right here in the back. Now, as you can see, there's there's four screws. One, two, and if I rotate it around, there's three and four screws that I'm going to have to take off in order to get the mirror off the back of it. So let's go ahead and take my Phillips screwdriver. Take out these four screws. I've used the towel so I, if I drop anything it won't bounce all over the place and I could possibly drop it on the floor and in the brown carpet it's going to be hard to heck, harder than heck to, to see it. So very carefully I'm going to take slide this right out of here and as you can see there's my mirror. Ooh, I guess I should clean it while I got it out. laid down some microfiber cloth on top of my uh, towel to help protect the mirror. That way the terry cloth of the towel might uh, mess it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the lock nuts and then I'm going to screw for the collimation. And there should be some springs back there behind them. Oop. There's a little washer behind each one of them. should lift right off that. As you can see there's springs here also. Alright, what I got, I got six of these parts because I didn't know the length on them if it was going to be good enough for one length to bring, give me enough back focus. But these are what they are, and they are stand, what they're called standoffs. I got six of them, and I see this. this is, these are all metric measurements, but they're M5 by 0, 0.08 threads. Those are the standoffs I got. And these are going to go in the end of the standoffs that the, that the adjusting knobs for the collimation will go on and it's a studded thread it's a threaded stud with a short thread on one side and a long thread on the other and these are the parts for them and it's the same size M5 by 0.08 threads add between the two of them if I needed to add two of them together and they're shorter than the other threat studs that are going to be on the up, on the outside end. But like I say, if I need to connect two of them together, this is what I'm going to use. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try out just a single first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach three of the single extension tubes 
to the studs that are here in place and they're just going to screw right down on top of them. And I'm going to take the shorter, the uh, longer double threaded studs that I got, which is this part right here. The S5 by 30 DPLN. And I'll thread each one of those short end of the threads into the top of this one. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pliers and just snug each one of these down just a little bit because I think they need to be a little snugger than just hand tight, but they don't need to be all that tight because the spring-loaded end that you do the calamation with, I think it needs to be tight enough that the spring won't it won't loosen when you change when you change your calamation. And then once so those are tight, then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I've got two little bolts, two little uh, nuts that I'm going to put on each one of them, just like this, and then tighten them up together. That way, what I'm going to do is kind of lock them in place to where then I can grab the two bolts and make the top stud a little tighter, too. And I'll do that to all three of them. Now that that's done, I didn't think about this before, but once the, the springs go on, you've got to have something, the springs, see how the springs go all the way down, well they want to stay, you need to keep them up here. So what I needed to do is I went and got some washers, and in this case, I got these washers, fin finish washers, and they're curved, and I'm hoping what, with them being curved like that, what's going to happen is they're going to go down across, around the top of this like this, and then when the spring hits it, when the spring is in place, it's going to be able to hear so it won't, rock, it won't pull off to the so one side or the other. They'll stay in place. All the way down. And that way, whenever I put the springs on them, the springs stay in place like that. Now we will redo these here. And one thing you got to realize is each of these has got a recess where the spring goes inside of them so it doesn't wobble around. And basically that's what I've done with this type of washer. Thread 
Spread these back on. And see, now my mirror sticks out that much further than it did. So all I have to do is put it back in and recalimate it. All right, and then the prob next problem I see that I didn't think about is these locking screws. They're not long enough anymore. So I'm going to have to take another trip to the hardware store and get some longer ones. Just regular, I guess, just regular bolts that'll go all the way down so it'll lock. Now the original thumb screws that came with these that were located here uh, were going to be too short. So what I ended up doing is I went and got some uh, uh, M5-8 at 50 millimeters long and that seems to be a good good starting point for the lockdowns on the thumb screws. Uh, the only problem is it's got a hex head on it instead of this nice little thing for finger uh, tightening. It's This is a lot com more comfortable than this but this should work. I mean they're never really very tight to begin with. It's just a little awkward to tighten them down but it seems to do the do the, the, the uh, good job and with that in place I now have my uh, mirror out that far so we'll button it all back together and put it uh, back in the telescope and go find out if we can uh, uh, prime focus with my 35 mm or my DSLR camera very carefully put this back into place line up my screw holes and tighten them back down of course I will have to recolumate the uh, telescope to make sure that because, yeah, I've messed up the mirror so bad that it's definitely going to have to be recalimated. Well, I got it modded out, and uh, I took it outside and checked things out, and uh, I can... Uh, prime focus now with my uh, DSLR camera. Of course I have to use the uh, uh, T-ring adapter on the uh, built into the uh, uh, telescope. Uh, so all I've got is my T-ring that goes from the uh, cannon to the T-threads which are located on the mount here and it works out just great. Uh, prime focus right through the camera uh, got good quality picture. The only thing is, on my Apostle eyepieces, uh, uh, I just used a uh, 32 millimeter eyepiece, which was my basically my uh, widest angle eyepiece, and uh, I could achieve focus uh, standard with it. Uh, then I broke out the 8 millimeter. And uh, with the 8mm, I can't achieve focus just with it straight into the eyepiece. So I'm going to have to get a, an adapter, uh, an extension adapter. Uh, the actu actually, the, uh, 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 the Barlow lens without the uh, extra, uh, that makes it actually the Barlow two times focus, take that completely off, and that's just the right size to use a stand, my, my regular eyepieces. So with the uh, uh, six millimeter that I checked out, uh, once I added this to it, I could focus without any problems with it. Uh, so I'm going to have to use the extension tube on the uh, 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 smaller millimeter eyepieces to get it to work. Uh, I used my Celestron uh, uh, Next Image 10 uh, didn't have any issues with it. I also used that Orion uh, Deep Sky Imager that I've got, and uh, uh, I can achieve focus with it without any adapters. 
Uh, so it seems to work out fine uh, just for the fact that I'll need to purchase uh, a regular adapter or just use or just keep using the uh, uh, Barlow without the uh, uh, magnifier on it. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, the size of pieces I uh, the hardware that I got with the with the with the links on it, the length uh, I chose was excellent. Uh, the uh, longer uh, threaded uh, pieces that I put on the end where the uh, calamation bolts go on to, those are the, the right length uh, with the washer on it, so I have plenty of room for calamation. Uh, one other thing that I did notice uh, that whenever I was out of focus on my images, and where you should have the whole circle with a black section in the middle so you can kind of tell if you've got it calamated right. The only problem is I was I was getting a half not quite just a little over a half of a circle like I was halfway off the uh, 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 secondary mirror and it was hanging over so I'll need to check that out and find out if that's possibly what that is or if it's something else but I got a funny feeling I'm hanging over the uh, uh, secondary mirror on that now uh, but once I got it focused uh, I didn't have any issues and the full image of the moon within my uh, uh, camera was great didn't have any issues with it so uh, I got enough secondary mirror to keep everything viewed once I once it's in focus uh, so anyway that should do it for this video Thanks again for uh, uh, subscribing to my channel and appreciate it. Thank you.